much more than a wafer. Let's cross now to Karim Sajapur, Senior Associate at uh, the Carnegie Endowment uh, for International Peace. Thanks for joining us uh, from, from Washington. Uh, before I ask you to, to comment on, on what Rob was just saying, uh, how did you feel when you woke up this morning? I think now is a moment of cautious optimism. Um, the deal isn't yet uh, confirmed that the, the terms still need to be hammered out. I think there's still a question of about whether the Iranians are operating off the same exact document. But I think um, the all the alternative scenarios were, were were not good. And so I think now is, a, as I said, a moment of cautious optimism. Uh, Robert Parsons uh, w was saying uh, when the news first broke uh, that uh, uh, this was more than he expected what came out of Lausanne. Do you agree? I do think that's right. Uh, the agreement really has exceeded expectations, um, both in terms of the concreteness of the document um, and, you know, in terms of the duration. So, so I think it certainly did exceed the expectations of cynics. But again, I think there is a big question mark about whether the Iranians see this deal exactly the same way we do. And we'll know uh, more in the coming days. Uh, the bigger sticking points uh, include, of course, the ability to verify the deal. Uh, what do you think? How airtight is it? Uh, you know, this is going to be something that we assess uh, over a period of not weeks or months, but years. Uh, there is concern about Iran's past transparency, um, its kind of seeming unwillingness to open up its program and to come clean about its perhaps its past flirtations with with um, nuclear weapons experiments. Um, so. And you can understand the Iranian perspective. They don't. They don't want to incriminate themselves. Um, but but again, in a negotiated agreement, you don't come out with perfection. Um, this is a very solid deal from the P5 plus one perspective. And I think, finally, um, for the first time in many years, the Iranian people are a winner here as well. Iranian people are a winner, but Karim Sajapur, uh, what happens? Because I know that some of the verifications on sites last for ten years others for 15. What happens uh, after that? Listen, that's going to be a, a champagne problem, frankly. If we can get through 10 <laughs> to 15 years, I think that will, uh, will be, we should be very happy about that. Um, 10, 15 years could be dramatic change within Iran. Iran's current supreme leader is 75 years old. In 15 years, he's going to be 90 the t the, if he's alive. The kind of the top generation of revolutionaries um, will increasingly be out of the scene and you'll have a population in which three quarters, if not 80 percent of which will have been born after the revolution. So um, I'm, I'm frankly, of all the things that concern me, what could take place 15 years from now is, is not in the top 100. We're, as you're speaking, we're, we're watching images of those overnight celebrations uh, in Tehran. Uh, is it really too soon to celebrate? You know, I understand where people are coming from. This is a, a society which has really been hit hard from two sides and that they've been crushed by a repressive regime and they've been crushed by onerous international sanctions. So it's where they have moments of celebration. I'm happy for people. Um, but at the same time, I think that they, the, the, the leadership in Iran should, should manage popular expectations. Um, this is not going to bring about economic deliverance anytime soon. The deal hasn't even been fully signed. I mean, we're still talking about a framework deal. Um, and I think inevitably, uh, even if the deal is signed, there's going to be disillusionment amongst people who say that it, it didn't deliver what they had hoped for. Um, but, you know, this is, it's all, it's, it's all relative. This is um, a regime four or five years ago which was far more repressive, far more antagonistic towards the outside world. And there's now a glimmer of hope within Iran that for the first time in perhaps three and a half decades, Iran could start to become um, reintegrated with the outside world. Well, there, were, there, were, uh, there was also a lot of hope uh, for those young people back in 2009. Uh, those protests were quashed then and the isolation grew further. Again, everyone's wondering, uh, have we reached a point of no return when it comes to that thaw in relations? 
you know, uh, when you've been watching the U.S.-Iran relationship a long time, you, you try not to get ahead of yourself because there have been moments in the past, particularly during the era of Mohammad Khatami, where things really looked on the cusp of change and uh, the, the change didn't happen. So right now is an incredibly important time. I think you have a president in Hassan Rouhani who genuinely wants to mend Iran's relationship with the outside world, with the United States. Um, but the hardliners are, are not going anywhere anytime soon. They have a monopoly of coercion with the Revolutionary Guards. And I'm, I'm skeptical that Iran's supreme leader, after 75 years, is going to reinvent himself and, and abandon everything he's stood for the last uh, three and a half decades in power. Speaking of hardliners, uh, how are the ducks lining up in Washington after uh, this agreement? We heard Barack Obama's uh, remarks on Thursday. They seem, well, squarely directed at the Republicans. So within Congress, there's going to be a vigorous discussion in the coming weeks and months about the um, utility of this deal. But frankly, again, if it's the... If the Iranians are operating, operating off the same framework that we are based on that document which came out yesterday, it's going to be very difficult for members of Congress to claim that they have a better alternative because it's a strong deal, certainly on paper. And if but, the but do they need world, a better do they need a better alternative? Can it just be their intention just be to scuttle the deal? Well, at the end of the day, Congress represents the American public, and the American public wants to resolve this issue peacefully. They don't want another war in the Middle East. So if the president uh, pitches this as either a choice between diplomacy and war, which he did yesterday, uh, it's going to be tough for Congress to scuttle diplomacy and make more war more likely. Uh, Karim Sajapur, uh, I, I, I listen to what you're saying and uh, our are you speaking as a, are, are, is there a defense mechanism in what you're saying? Uh, you're being cautious uh, about uh, the, the path that lies ahead to June 30th. Is it because you've had your hopes dashed before in the past that you're yourself not uh, uncorking the champagne? Well, listen, I'm an analyst. I'm not uh, an activist. Uh, but obviously, you know, I look at things of what's uh, in the interest of U.S. national security. And as someone with Iranian heritage, I obviously want to see um, better times for the Iranian people. And I think this deal is one of those rare win-wins in that it's good for U.S. national security, U.S. interests, and it's certainly good for the interests of the Iranian people. But I think uh, we have to be cautious not to put our, our, our hopes before our experience or our analysis. And, you know, as, as you well know as well, there have been moments where these hopes have been dashed. So that's why I say cautious optimism. Um, perhaps you put it best. We, uh, you know, we can't uncork the champagne just yet. And, and uh, so far, uh, just one final question, which is, uh, what about the chemistry uh, between uh, on the one hand, the, the, the foreign minister uh, of Iran, who's, who's really come, come into the international spotlight with, with, with these talks, and uh, the uh, EU negotiator Federica Mogherini, and of course, John Kerry. For, certainly for uh, the United States and Iran, this deal would have been less likely um, had Zarif not been in the picture and perhaps had not... Kerry been in the picture, but in particular, the person of Javad Zarif, he's the most effective professional diplomat Iran has had since the revolution. He speaks perfect English. He's very amiable. Um, and I think he, he smartly did his best to reassure the Supreme Leader throughout these negotiations. Now, we still haven't seen the Supreme Leader's reaction, but this morning I saw Zarif's speech in Tehran. He gave credit to, to the Supreme Leader. Um, and, and John Kerry is someone who, from the time he was in Congress, was always very supportive of diplomacy with Iran. I remember testifying before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee when he was chairman, and he was far more optimistic than I was about the prospects of some type of a, an accommodation with Iran. And you know, I give him credit at age 71 that um, 
he, he maintains that optimism. He worked tremendously hard for this, and um, we'll see what happens. All right, Karim uh, uh, Sajapur uh, speaking with his head and uh, from, uh, from Washington. Many thanks for joining us.